are back and it's episode 32 uh, from Behind the Bikini and we are going to be covering uh, critics and why they don't count and IG and stuff like that and, and oh my goodness, you're frozen? Are you frozen? Are you there? Oh my okay, <laughs> like, we are just having all the technology issues today. Um, I can hear you. Now you're, okay, now your face is moving. I am here. Yeah. We have had so many technology issues this morning, you guys. I can't even, like, <laughs> but we're here, and we made it, and we're going to make this work, because we always do. So, so you did. <laughs> episode 32, Behind the Bikini. Like, comment, subscribe, all of the fun things. Um, and yes, today's topic, we are going to talk about critics online. Um, we're also going to talk about just the, um, the basis behind would you still... Uh, bodybuild if it weren't for social media so the kind of that push pull that we get from from the from that so that's our topic today but before we get into all of that today how's everything how's life good yeah just started prep so we're just kind of moving and grooving right now uh we were at the clash last weekend so start of the season so that was a that was a great show ali won her olympia qualification mm -hmm. so super cool to be there for her and and get, go through all that we had about eight or nine pros that weekend and two or three amateurs. So super fun weekend. It actually felt nice to kind of be back in the chaos, surprisingly. Um, and yeah, just we're back home now. My mother-in-law flew into town super late last night. So it'd be nice to see her. We haven't seen her since we moved out here and the dogs and and things like that get to hang out with grandma. Um, my birthday is next Wednesday. So that's really cool too. So get some celebration time in and other than that, just moving and so grooving. What are, about, what are you doing for your birthday? Yeah, what are you um, doing for your birthday? Anything, anything exciting? Anything fun? Working. It's going to be Wednesday, so it's <laughs> heavy, heavy check-in day for me. And then, um, yeah, we're just going to put put together a little party with all my Arizona friends out here on a, on Saturday night. Uh, we have a couple friends flying into town, too. Um, so that'll be nice. So it'll just be nice to chill for a second and then I get a free meal that night too so all fun <laughs> there you go yeah because you're because you're in prep now too so how was like doing okay so you went to, to clash how was doing that kind of getting back into the swing of things but also being on prep at the same time how did that work out for you it's easy you know it's, it was only um literally my we started prep on Sunday and then I left for clash that Thursday um so I, I like the first like three to four weeks of prep when food's a little bit lower and you're adding a little bit more cardio in, you know, you start to kind of feel a little bit healthier, you know, you're getting your aerobics back in, you don't feel as full, things like that. Um, so we're not mm -hmm. suffering by any means or anything like yet. Um, so that was, that was fine. And I like being busy, you know, my, my best days are when I'm busy and I have to be at my computer all day because the time just flies. Um, yeah. And then uh, just being there and supporting the athletes. I don't know. It's just something I love to do. I love, you know, being there and supporting them. I love the 911 calls. Oh, Jordan, I screwed my tan up. Please come help me. Blah, blah, blah. You know, come in right now, you know? Yeah. Um, so it, it, it was good. It's, it kind of, you know, lights that fire in your soul, you know, especially as you're prepping and you're kind of seeing everybody else stage lean and what they're doing. And um, it just kind of keeps you motivated, especially the first few weeks prep. Yeah. And I, you know, that's something I'm looking forward to with um, Charlotte this weekend, because really that's kind of our first real show for me, like going back, you know, we've had the, the Arnold and stuff like that, but it wasn't like crazy. Like we have a bunch of people competing or anything like that, you know, it's more fun than anything else. Sure. So, you know, it's, 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 it's a different feeling when you're actually working the show, you know what I mean? Like getting the girls ready. And like you said, just being kind of calm in the chaos when you're, when you're the coach, you're the calm in the chaos. So it's a little different. Um, it usually takes me a couple of shows to kind of get back into the swing of things, like once we start the season back up again. So I'm curious to see how this weekend is going to go for me personally, because <laughs> I'm like, I've gotten so used to, you know, sleeping in and like staying up super late and sleeping in. And then when I go to shows, I don't sleep. I mean, most of us don't, you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting. So, um, I kind of, sort of, I mean, I started cleaning up my diet this week too. I'm not really in prep eat like yet. I don't consider it prep, but we did start a carb cycle. Um, we did up the cardio and I dropped four pounds this week. <laughs> Dang. Wow. <laughs> but a lot of that, a lot, I know well, a lot of that though was inflammation because like I said, the week before was, was, um, Dan's birthday and I, you know, cooked for him and all that kind of stuff. So I was holding weight last week. So in reality, if you take that week, that week time frame out, I'm probably down about a pound and a half total, you know what sure. I mean? But I'm, you know, it's still for a one week span to go from, you know, the here to here is like, that was a big deal. Like, um, just energy wise, I was saying this in my check-in today, I was exhausted all week. Like, 
right after I got done with training, I wanted to go take a nap. <laughs> just like, cause my body's just like, okay, we're getting back into the groove. Like you said, you're not feeling quite so full anymore. Your body's like starting to fire on those cylinders again. So it takes more energy, uh, yeah. you know, and, and, and you're spending more energy when you're actually in the gym. And like, like every day, like there's twice this week, I actually took a nap after my, after my training, but every day I wanted to, wow. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, I need to go lay down. Like yesterday I was, um, I done uh, glutes yesterday during part of the coaching call. And then when I got home, I was on the rest of the, the coaching call from home and I'm sitting there and I'm like, <laughs> knocking off. I'm like, Oh my God, my body. Like I just need to lay down. And I was like, Holy crap. Um, woke up this morning. My hamstrings are super sore. And I'm just like, okay, well that's, that's me pushing really hard. I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Your body's like, talking. You need to listen. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, that's the crazy thing too. Cause like we've talked about, I mean, my training's down to four days a week. So you would think it would be easier for me to recover. And it's just, it's just not because I'm pushing myself harder, you know? So yeah. You know, but it's, it's, it's a fun time frame too, because like you said, I mean, you start to see things tighten up. Like I took my pictures this morning and already I look like a different person from last week. And I'm like, Whoa, that was a big change. Holy crap. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's, it's really, uh, you know, it's the more that we do this, you know, it's, it's interesting. Like the things that would normally make me freak out, I'm not freaking yeah. out about, yeah. um, the Saturday of clash, I was down like three and a half pounds from Sunday. Um, and then Sunday morning, we, we didn't sleep all night. Um, we yeah. had a really early flight on Sunday and then my weight was up and then my weight just continued to go up and I'm like, huh, that's interesting. And then Sunday on the plane, I started having cramps. Mm. I was like, okay. Um, and, uh, the day before yesterday I had cramps and then yesterday we had some changes, like uh -huh. start to see some, some things. So I think I'm gonna cycle i think i'm gonna cycle yeah you were mentioning that on the call yesterday yeah um so the last time i had a period it was february 6th of 2022 and wow. it's the fourth so well we'll see so two years I, later I, wow yeah so i will uh we'll, we'll, i was cramping all night last night i was shocked i didn't wake up with a bleep this morning so yeah hopefully we get it, but it's so fun. i mean i've been in improvement season for five months and literally the week i pulled the trigger on prep it's like prep. yeah there you go. here's your period back and now i'm gonna start getting lean again so i'm like yep <laughs> we just got there <laughs> yeah but you can already start like seeing it in my face and stuff too like i am getting leaner and um yeah. obviously like cutting alcohol and you know free yeah. and things like that like i'm tightening back up again my skin's clearing up so it's i'm so I'm, i know that we're moving in the right direction but you know like i said years ago if i would have saw that at scale the slow the sale slowly creeping up it would have been like oh my god it's not working you know mm -hmm. so. well that's so i actually had a call we, we haven't done a podcast since i had a call with premiere over my my blood my blood work so um i went on you know i was i told you i'm, I'm dr google i go on on google all this stuff and i think i know what's going on and i'm totally wrong <laughs> So I got on the call with the doctor and they're like, no, actually all your iron level levels are good. Your this is good. That's good. Everything's good. You know, the only thing we have to be um, paying attention to is your T3, T4, which for me is always on the lower side. Um, but that, but um, what is it? TSH? Is that what it is? That they're like, they're, that's normal. So that tells me that your, your um, thyroid is working fine. Yep. So, you know, we just have to pay attention. You just, you just run a little bit on the low end. Um, but every other level that was a little bit off coming out of prep, it's all back to normal. All of it. Good. Good. So I was like, and I, I thought, you know, again, this is why you have to have doctors look at your stuff, right? So when I'm looking at everything, I'm like, oh, I think all this stuff is because I'm anemic and my iron levels and blah, blah, blah. I'm, but I'm pretty consistent about making sure that I get like red meat and, you know, those kinds of things in my diet so that I can combat that because I know that about myself. And she's like, no, actually, your iron levels are pretty high. I was like, oh, okay, I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong about all of it. Cool. Cool, cool story. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, um, in reality, though, I'm glad I was wrong because that when we went through everything, she was like, no, you're actually functioning really, really well. And like looking back at your last labs, all of the things that we were looking at from the last time are fine now. Um, your body's just in a happier place right now. Um, she, it's funny because the whole period thing, I've only, this whole time that I've been bodybuilding for 15 years, I've only ever lost my period one time. Um, it was when I was really super lean. It was years ago. Other than that, I've been super regular. As you guys know, I got it while I was, while I was in Hawaii on my, <laughs> my peak week. So, um, that's never been an issue for me, but the, my, my period this past month, I didn't even know it was coming. Like I didn't even feel it. Like it was just all of a sudden it was, boom, it was there. And I was like, 
I'm not like that normally. Like normally I can feel it a couple of days ahead of time. Like you said, you've got the weight pain, you've got all those things going on. I didn't have any of that. So, wow. you know, I was talking to her on the, on the phone. I was like, yeah, it was actually really mild. I'm like, I don't really know why, but it was very mild. I didn't, I didn't cramp. I only had it for like three, four days, which is about right for me. But usually those three, four days are super heavy and it wasn't like that this, this month either. So who knows? Maybe, maybe I'm going into menopause. Maybe. <laughs> I say that all the time. I'm like, God, maybe, I, I'm like, maybe I'm going to lose it. <laughs> I wish I could go into menopause. I mean, I just have to deal with any of this, but. <laughs> I know, right? I know. I'm like, I say that and then watch, I go get pregnant or some shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, no. No kids club. <laughs> no, no kids club. Yeah. That's why we got dogs. That's why we yep. got dogs. Yeah. Yep. It's, yep. it's so funny because I don't know about you guys, but like me and Dan, we, we follow a bunch of rescues like for dogs and stuff like that. I'm, I'm Facebook. So every day we're both sending each other dogs that we should go rescue. I'm like, I'm like, we can't, we gotta stop doing this. We are going to end up having like a farm of rescue dogs. Of animals. Like, like hey, we can't. You have the space for it. I so know. if you wanted to. Yeah. We do. Yeah. We do. That's, and that was that's like the caveat, right? You're like, well, yeah. we do have the space, so could we yeah. I know. Well, honestly, I mean, and you guys know this. I mean, one of the reasons why we got the house that we did is because of the yard, because of the dogs, you know, yeah. I, the dog, I, you know, I, I'm a sucker for dogs, period, just in general, but like they have such a shorter lifespan than we do. I feel like we need to give them everything that they possibly can because they give us everything, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. all they want, all they want is food and love. That's literally all they want in their lives. Yeah. So I'm very, I'm very sensitive on that subject because Drew is always like, like out here we're like do we renew our lease next year here because we love this building we live yeah. here where do we go buy a house and drew's like well he's like i know you're sen sensitive on the subject but you know oliver is seven so you know he's not really going to be around much longer and i'm like drew like i don't know. say that he's like i just don't want to like buy a house like with a yard like if we you know if we're not gonna have oliver for a while I'm like oh, oh my, my god, god. I know. Oh, it's so bad. See, us on the other hand, like same thing. I'm I'm that person that I'm like, you know, Elvis is getting older kind of thing because he's a big dog, you know, 110 pounds. I'm like, but I'm like, we gotta give him all the life we possibly can yeah. while he's here, you know what I mean? And I think it keeps him young. The exercise all that stuff keeps him young, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have this funny story where cause we Elvis is technically a rescue because my girlfriend was um, trying to get rid of him, so we we took him. So um, we had the vet come. We had a mobile vet, so we had a vet come to the house, and they're looking at all of our dogs. You know, all three of them at the same time. Pickle's gone now, but Pickle was around at that point in time, and. Um, so she's asking what the dog's ages are. This is years since we've had Elvis, right? This is years. We've had him for like four years at this point when this is happening. And and Dan just just nonchalantly goes, he's three. I was like, Dan, we got him when he was three. <laughs> I was like, he's like, he's like at least seven now. Six, six, seven, yeah. <laughs> he's like, and his whole face, Dan's whole face was just like, oh. <laughs> math ain't math and Dan. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> He's at least seven years old at this point. I'm like, and all of a sudden you can just see, like, Dan was like, oh my God. Like, like, cause the time just goes by so fast. The realization. You know? so, yeah. So we have this, this joke that he's forever three. Uh, all, all of our dogs are forever three. They never, they never age past three. How old are they? Three. 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 You said that last three. year. Yep. They're three. Yep. They're three. This is, it's his third birthday. Again, just yep. like 29 for women. It's three. Dogs. Yep. So. I realize now that I'm getting old because um, people keep asking me what my age is, and I had to do the math two days ago. I have no clue. I, <laughs> I, I do honestly, that too. Honestly, you know when I figured it out, I didn't. I didn't actually do math. That's a lie. I was trying to do math, but I didn't. When we were going on our team call yesterday, and we were reviewing my lab work, it said at the top, Jordan Brandon, my birthday, and it says age. And I was like, 32. I'm 32. I'm 32. That's too funny. I do the same thing because sometimes I say I'm 40. I'm like, no, I'm 42. I have to think about it for a second, and I'm yeah. like. Am I actually 42 or am I 41? Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I do After that all 30, the time. I'm like, I don't know. I'm 30. I'm just going to say I'm 30. <laughs> yeah. And once you start, once you start looking like you're 42, you start doing Botox to get rid of it and you're good. That's it. That's it. Everybody still tells me I look 16 because I look like this all the time. Yeah. So I'm My husband says the same thing. Like when I'm not, when I don't have makeup on everything, he's like, you look like you're 18. I feel like a perv. <laughs> Sorry, this yeah. is what you signed up for. <laughs> Sorry, you had to deal with all this I know. youthfulness. Too bad. Too bad. So Too sad. Bad. <laughs> yeah, which we just had our um, 13th wedding anniversary. So C yeah, congratulations. Yeah. That's Amazing. another one we have to think think back about. We're like, wait, how many years is it? When did we actually meet? You know, all those kinds of things. 
So I got the tattoo. There you go. You got a tattoo and you can't, you can't forget. You can't forget. But we've, we actually met on my birthday. So at least I know that part. Ah, okay. He, yeah. He always gets our anniversary date wrong because it's, it's April 2nd and he always thinks it's April 1st. I'm like, no, because then it would be April Fool's Day. We did that on purpose. We didn't want April 1st, you know? So this was the first year he got our anniversary correct as far as the date was concerned. So we're making progress. <laughs> Good job, Dan. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> but every year I'm like, okay, what day is it? Okay, what day is it? You know? Um, you remind him every day up until April. No, nah, nah, I'm not not that bad. No, he's, he's always good about it, but it's just like always a day or so off. A day off. Kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Same thing with his birthday. So I don't, I can't remember if we talked about this or not, but um, he was actually born in Italy. Um and then he he was raised in Spain. His mom's from Spain. His dad was um, from Alabama. So he was a Navy brat, you know. And uh, over there, they do birthdays different. So they don't they don't record your birthday. They record the day that you got um, baptized. So Dan thinks he knows his birthday, but he could be wrong. It could that could actually be the day that he, he got baptized. He asked his mom. His mom was alive. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. He actually, yeah, he could actually his birthday could actually be a different day. He's pretty sure that it's that, that he's got the right birth, birth day, but it could be it could be wrong. I feel like he's he's robbed. I feel like he's robbed. <laughs> I know, he right? He doesn't actually know the day yeah. he was birthed. Yeah. That's that's a wild thought. Yeah, because over there the birth certificates and everything, they do it like according to when you're baptized versus when you're actually born. How yeah. soon after you're born do you usually get baptized? About five days. So it could be within a five day period. Mm -hmm. Holy yeah. moly. That's interesting. Yeah. I never knew that. Thank yep. you for that education. Yeah. I didn't know that until they told me. And he's like, and he was like, he, he, you know, his mom, his mom, he's got, you know, brothers and sisters and stuff. I think he's the fifth one. He's, is he the fifth? he's got a younger sister. So he's fourth on the, on the tier of, of wow. people. So his mom didn't know, you know, <laughs> what they recorded and what they didn't. <laughs> so he thinks, you know, his birthday, he thinks. We're just, yeah, we're just going to go with that's his birthday because, man, that's, wow, that's quiet. That's wild. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's, um, it's you know, people, that's the funny part. It's like when you go to different countries and stuff, things are so different versus what our traditions are here. Just, that's just how they are. That's just how it always has been. So, yeah. But, yeah, so it's been a few weeks of lots of celebrations and stuff. We didn't really do anything for the, the anniversary other than just we grilled and stuff like that because, I mean, I ate my face off for Dan's birthday, so I didn't need to do that again. <laughs> That's why probably that's why it's just a stick to plan. <laughs> that's why I dropped four pounds this week and didn't exactly. Gain. <laughs> you know, so exactly. it is what it is. So yep. um, but yeah, so we'll see um how everything goes going forward. I feel like this weekend is probably gonna be a little off just because of the traveling. I will be driving. Um are you going to a show this weekend? No. I have no, my mother in law. Yeah. Okay. So I can get settled in and all that kind of stuff. I don't too. travel again till um girl power. Okay. Is that next yep. week? Um, nope, the last week of April, April 27th. Okay. That's right, because we have a local show here at the same weekend. Because I had people ask me if I was going to that one. I said, no, there's a Virginia show here. There's actually a local show here in uh, Phoenix this weekend, too. And it's um, everything pro that Arnold didn't have. So Yes, it's the, it's the Dynasty. Out. Yeah, and it's supposed yeah. to be like a really big show. So we might pop over there Saturday morning and go watch prejudging and yeah. the Shopping and there you my mother in law down to spend some time with her. So, um, but I might pop over there because somebody said that the numbers are wild. So, really? it's pretty cool. Just it's local. Why not? It's just, yeah, you know, go check it out. out. Like Mesa. Yeah. So, I might be at a show. You know, you guys know me. I'm always at a show studying. <laughs> I know. Well, that's what I did this last weekend too. We had the we had a local NPC show here. I didn't have any clients in it, but I went anyway. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's go check it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, why not? Um, yeah, you can always learn something, meet somebody, whatever. You know, I met a couple of people that I, that that are going to be working with me that I hadn't met in person before. That kind of perfect. thing. So perfect. That's what those those shows are all about. So I'm excited about Charlotte, though. We have a handful of girls doing it. Um, upset that Yulia's not doing it, but hey, you know what? <laughs> She's gonna go. Gotta go fix that skin of hers. <laughs> yep. Go fit body. <laughs> Yeah, 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 Last yeah. Last weekend we took both pro shows. We'll see what this yep. weekend brings, but it's yeah. gonna be a good one. I'm, I'm it's, excited. The lineup could really could be anybody. At it could be anybody. Up. It yep. could be anybody. I'm kind of excited to see how how it plays out. That's always exciting to go in when you don't have a front runner. You know what yep. I mean? Yep. It's like anybody's it's anybody's game. I I feel like if I was if I was one of the competitors going to that show, it, it would really motivate me to think, hey, I could break through right now. Yeah, those are the, those are the to me the most fun shows. It's like mm -hmm. who's actually gonna break come out on this one? So yep. 
Yep. I have I have my eyes on some people. I have some some things. Some yeah, some things, some, some thoughts. <laughs> got some things going on. <laughs> well, that brings us into our topic for today. The first part of our topic, which is it's never the critic that counts. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up. So this is kind of a, a, a hot topic because you know, as the sport grows, we get more and more opinions. You know, just like you said, you've got some thoughts. I've got I've always got thoughts. I share my thoughts all the time, have for years. But now we have lots of other people doing it too, which is good. Um, it's a good thing that means that the sport and the interest in it is getting bigger. Um, but what I find happens, and you can kind of put your own to, to spin on this as well, is a lot of times this sport is a very individualized sport, meaning it's not, you know, it's if we're, if we're on ESPN, they're talking about a, a baseball or football or basketball team versus an individual person most of the time. If they're talking about an individual person, it's usually a superstar or that kind of thing, whatever, you know, LeBron James or something like that. That's what they're talking about. They're not talking about the guy that just walks on, you know? Um, they're talking about the, the full team or they're talking about the superstars. In our sport, we get a lot of that too. We get a lot of them talking about the superstars, the, you know, the Jen Dorries, the Maureen Blankiscos, you know, those kinds of things. But we also get people talking about the walk-ons. We're getting the people that are coming out and doing their pro debuts and, and things like that. And, um, and it's really hard, I think, mentally to realize that their, their opinions don't matter, but also realize that it's a good thing they're talking about you. You know what I mean? Um, you have to kind of put yourself into a position where you realize, listen, I'm a professional athlete and you know, th this is, this is hype for the sport. And if we don't have that, if we don't have interest, if we don't have people sharing their opinions, th the sport doesn't get any traction. So, you know, I think regardless of what people are saying about you, I think it's a good thing because people are talking about the sport um, and you just have to realize what you need to listen to and what you don't. Um, when you were first coming into the, into the, the pro league yourself did you hear a lot of noise or did you just not pay attention or what did you do i heard nothing there was nothing in the beginning i didn't really gain traction until um i started kind of really moving up fast in the ranks and people are like wait who is this girl where'd she come from and then you know some of the more the noise started but i've been um i've been pretty blessed that way that i just mm -hmm. kind of been cruising and you know really when i won hurricane is kind of when i was more of like the um, the topic of the party, uh -huh. you know, like, okay, cool. She looks really good. Like, okay, well, she's going to the Olympia next week. And then, you know, people were putting me in their predictions. And up until that point, I was never in any predictions. I was never talked about. I was never a threat, you know? So, um, I kind of like it that way. You know, I just kind of like to you know show up and do my thing. And if it's, you know, my outcome, great. If it's not, that's cool too. Um, I'll be honest with you. There's been a couple pro shows that I've won or, you know, did really well in and, you know, coaches or people do you know the highlight videos and things like that not you sean you always recap me but they didn't even they don't even talk about me you know they yeah. it's not even like a show that they comment on or talk comments on my physique so i've been kind of blessed that way where i'm just kind of flying under the radar and i kind of like it that way um you know i'm a sensitive person you know i i care about what people think about me my feelings matter to me and i think that's ultimately you know in this sport you, you gotta learn to have thick skin you know you gotta learn to have thick skin with your coach because our job is to tell you what your flaws are and how we fix it. Some people can't take that critique and that feedback. The judge's job is to tell you what your flaws are and how to fix it. Some people don't like that either. Um, and then obviously, you know, you're going to hear noise all around, whether you're in the pro league or not, you're going to hear different opinions or ways to do things. And sometimes that noise can be confusing and make you question. And um, it's important to really stay grounded in what you know you believe in and continue on that route. Yeah. Now, when you if you've heard any kind of chatter or not, you know, you just said you've had people not talk about you and things like that. Does that bother you mentally? Sometimes it does. Yeah. I mean, I'm human. I'm like, hey, why am I not cool enough that, you know, somebody commented on my win or what my physique looked like? Um, yeah, I'd be lying if I said I didn't. Does it really affect me? No, not really. I'm still going to continue to do me and show up. Honestly, it motivates me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want to be someone that. Um, it has a worthy enough, you know, physique to be talked about, you know, yeah. like I want, you know, I want people to recognize that hard work. Um, we don't do this, you know, um, you know, for, for, you know, I do it mostly for myself, but obviously we want to win. And then, mm -hmm. you know, the way we make that kind of, that kind of noise, if you will, but it doesn't deter me in any way. And it doesn't make me think like, oh, I'm not good enough. You know, honestly, like I said, like, I think less is more for me. You know, mm -hmm. I'd rather be flying under the radar than be talked about all the time. I think that would almost make me get in my head a lot more. Yeah. Um, 
So I kind of like the position that I'm in right now, you know, and yeah. I'm just kind of, I'm continuing to be motivated each and every year by what I could do better to be in a better spot on that Olympia stage. And everything that has happened to me up until this point has only been a motivator for me, good and bad. Um, so I just use everything that's kind of going on as, as a lesson and a push. Yeah. Um, I have a little bit of a different take on it too, because when I was coming up and doing the national circuits and things like that, that was when a lot of the bodybuilding media covered shows on message, message boards. We had noise. I'm starting over on that thought. So here's the thought. Um, when I was coming up in the national circuit, they had RX muscle, uh, you know, muscular development, all of them, they were sitting there. They actually had the keyboards out. They were keyboard warriors actually at the shows and talking about competitors, right? So um, giving critiques and things like that, this was the national level. So when I won my pro card, I, Dave Palumbo was on RX Muscle talking about me, like well, when I was on stage, you know what I mean? So um, I kind of grew up knowing that was a thing. And I'll also say this, I mean, back then, it wasn't really a lot of women that were that were critiques, like cr critics. Criti um, critiquing. Was, yeah. Yeah, it was men. So um, a lot of times the, the critiques were a lot harsher <laughs> than what we even see today. You know what I mean? So um, like, I'll never forget because when that show was over with, you know, again, Dave Palumbo did his little write up on Alex Muscle and said that I was the, the one to watch coming out of the amateurs. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, shoot. but again, that also puts a little bit of pressure on you too. Right. So I was like, all of a sudden I was like, oh no, now I need to really do well. You know, and I'll be honest with you, when I came out the next year, I wish, so I won my pro card at uh, Team Universe, NPC Universe now. I wish I'd gone right on and done my pro debut. I didn't. I waited and I came back out the next year. And um, why do you I, wish that? Because A, the standards really changed. So this was the time frame where come September, Nicole Wilkins came out shredded hard as a rock. And the criteria for, she won the figure Olympia and the criteria for figure went through the roof after that. So everybody was coming in shredded and big and all this kind of stuff. Right. So my physique, I tell people all the time, I'm like, if I hadn't won my pro card when I did, I don't think I would have won it in figure because it just wouldn't fit, wouldn't have fit the criteria anymore. Um, so anyway, so I waited until spring of the following year. Cause I already knew coming off of my pro win that I needed more size. I already knew that. Um, but then come into my pro debut, I had a little bit more size, but my conditioning was way off, like way, way off. I was, it was bad. <laughs> it was very, very bad. Um, and it was a horrible pro debut, honestly, for me, like everything went wrong. So that's how my um, heart hated my pro debut. <laughs> it was terrible. Like my, yeah. suit, I dropped so much water. My suit didn't fit me anymore. And it's falling off my hips. Like it was just, it, I was glued into that thing. It was bad. Um, so I, I, I was like, I knew at that point after that show that I was no longer going to fit the criteria for figure and nor did I want to, I didn't want to fit the criteria, but I also knew that I didn't want to leave the figure stage looking like shit. Cause I looked like shit that day. Right. So I went on and did one more show and figure before I hung up the heels and went to bikini. Uh, but anyway, going through all of that, that whole time frame after I'd gotten off stage, after winning my pro, my pro card and stuff, I had that in the back of my head that I had pressure on me because I was the amateur to watch coming into the pro league. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Yeah. And that literally sat in the back of my head the whole time. Yeah. And um, it, I don't think it was a good thing. I think it was a bad thing. I think it actually hindered me. Um, it, I pushed hard, but I think at the end of the day, I think when I came out for my pro debut, I think it screwed me up. You know, I think yeah. that was one of the big things. So I put a lot of expectation on myself um, and I didn't need any of it. I didn't need not a single thing. <laughs> I was like, eh. And people say that all the time, you know, the higher you start placing, the more pressure there is, right. there, the next expectation is, right? That's so, right. You know, and again, you know, for us, we're talking about the pro league and, you know, on a national level, if you're, you know, higher up in the nationals, you don't really have room to have a bad day, mm -mm. you know? So, you know, it's so much pressure to mm -hmm. keep showing up 100 percent and you know drew and i always say the worst type of feedback is keep showing up the same keep showing up the same because it's so hard to hold the same look show to mm -hmm. show to show to show um and that adds another added pressure okay they don't want any change you just want this look well how did i reproduce this look and how do i copy and paste copy? and it's you're human there's it's it's, right. it's it's impossible to copy and paste the same thing every time um 
So yes, the pressure, the, the, the more pressure I put into myself in shows, we talked about this, the worse I've done. And mm-hmm. I think noise creates that as well. When you know that other people are watching and it's now, now it's just not you creating that pressure on yourself. You know that other people are having that same expectation of you as well. And yep. that creates a lot of stress. That's right. And then it goes back to also wanting to end up proving people wrong too. Like if they're, if they're critiquing you and things like that, and they're giving you harsh critiques, you want to prove them wrong. And Absolutely. it's that, that, that for me, for the first part of my pro career was the hardest part because I'm like, I gotta, I gotta come out and do well. I gotta come out and prove these people wrong. I gotta, you know, I gotta make it better, blah, 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 and all that kind of shit. And I think that a lot of us go through that. Um, I got to a point where I was just this, and that was a good part of my, of my pro career. I got to a point where I was like, I'm just, I'm, I can't do this anymore. It's sucking all the life out of me, you know, it's sucking the joy out of it. I don't like doing it anymore. You know, it's not, I'm not doing this for me anymore. You know, all those kinds of things. So at some point you just have to shut the noise out. And what I started doing, gosh, when was this? I think this was in 2016. I started deleting all of my social media going into peak week for show. Um, and that really helped. Uh, I just turned off all the noise. Um, I had gotten better about not looking at it and things like that while I was in prep, you know what I mean? But I felt, I felt like that last week was when things really got to me because a lot of the times the last week you're just sitting around doing nothing, right? So you're just scrolling mindlessly, you know, and that's where I felt like it hit me the worst. So I just ended up like when I was in peak week, I would just delete everything. Um, yeah, I stayed off my phone on peak week for sure. Yeah, it was hard for me yeah. to do not not personally, but business wise, because so, so much of my business is surrounded by that. Online. You know what I mean? And yeah. I just I have to be in touch with clients. I have to be posting. I have to be doing all that stuff all the time, every day. You miss a day and you're out of everybody's feed. You know what I mean? So that part of it was really was really tough. So I realized I couldn't continue with that too, and I realized it was more of a I had to change my own mindset and had to create my own goals. So you know, going into um, you know, the shows this past year, like I've talked about before, like my goal coming out of Japan was I want to go into masters at that point, but nobody knew that other than myself. And I think I told Jamie at that point too, but I think that was it. Like I was the only one I didn't, I didn't share that with the world. I didn't share what my goals were with the world. I kept it right here because I knew that this is something I personally wanted. And it didn't matter what anybody else said. It didn't matter what they thought. If they thought that I looked great or they thought I looked like shit, it didn't matter because I knew what my goal was the next time going on stage. Right. So I don't know what the solution is for everybody, but I think one of the things that you could do as far as trying to remove the noise from the critics and things like that is find your own goal and whatever that might be and keep that to yourself. Don't even share it. You know, don't tell people, don't put it out there. You know, that's, that's for you. And that's what you focus on versus what they're saying. Because Again, going back to, there's nothing wrong with critics. I think it's a good thing. I think the more that they talk about the sport, the bigger the sport is going to get. But again, where the issue lies is we're talking about individual people versus teams, you know, like what we're going to see on ESPN or something like that. So a lot of times people take, you know, this was, this was a comment or a a thread, a topic thread on Reddit the other day where they were talking about this girl that's switching from figure to wellness and she, they're saying she still looks like she's figure. Well, they're not they're not attacking her as a person. They're talking about her structure and they're talking about what they see and they're talking about the criteria and there's nothing wrong with that. That's the whole thing. You need to have, you need to have opinions. You need to have people that are talking about you, period. They need to be talking about the sport, but you have to remember they're not talking about you specifically and your character and how hard you're working and what you're doing and, and, and all of the things that you're doing to try to reach your goals. They're talking about what the criteria is on stage, right? And what they see versus what is being brought, you know, that kind of thing. So um, I, again, I don't think there's anything wrong with critics. I think they're actually good. I think we need them. I think we need more of them. That's why I do the, the live feeds that I do. That's why I go, you know, go to the shows and things like that. We need to boost the fan base, period. As athletes, we need to know how to get rid of that noise from our head. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also important to realize too, that the critics and the commenters all, at the end of the day, their opinions, mm-hmm. you know, they're not the people that are judging you actually on stage and giving you that feedback. So you have That's to right. take it with salt and really understand what the root of that person is, you know, what, it, what, 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 what place are they coming from? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, your critiques are great because you have a judging background, mm-hmm. right? So not only are you critiquing from a fan base and being an athlete, but also you have that judging background. So your critique has more weight yes. versus someone on Reddit who's, you know, anonymous and we don't yes. know if they're, we don't know them from Adam, you know, right. to me, that's 
opinion. Um, right. So, you know, just realizing to where the source is coming from and how deep that source is actually rooted. And, you know, that's and the idea. intention, the intention behind the source too, because I know whenever I critique people, it's because I want to see what they could do better for their physique. I want to give them things that are a little bit off that they could fix to make themselves a little bit better versus some people are just there to tear you down, period. And those are the Absolutely. ones that you, that you shouldn't be listening to, right? right? Those are the ones who are like, okay, whatever. But again, it's a good thing to have those, right? You know, I always, again, go and liken this back to college sports. You know, we're looking at, you know, NIL and stuff like that now, too. There is a lot of noise out there. And these kids are 17, 18, 19 years old going into going into college. And they're hearing all of this stuff way more than we do in this sport because it's way bigger. You know what I mean? But somehow they got to siphon, siphon through that and still perform when they get on the court or when they get on the field or whatever it might be. Um, and if they can do it, I think we as adults can do it. <laughs> Just saying. I mean, yeah. if kids if kids coming out of high school can, can perform well once they get to college, even with all of this noise going on in the background and understanding that there's going to be noise, that's why, they're, that's why they're a college athlete. And again, it goes the same thing when they go into the pros too. I mean, I think we can do this as adults too, right? We can, we can yeah. you know allow those opinions, but not let them affect us. Yeah. And again, you know, you know, my dad used to say growing up, Jay, you got to get thick skin. You got to get thick skin. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was very sensitive when I mm -hmm. grew up. It's easier said than done. So if, you know, the thick skin part, I think starts with, you know, identifying for you, your why and why yes. you do this and what this means to you and sticking true to, you know, internally what the sport does for you. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I know I'm going to be done when it's not fun anymore. Yeah. You know, I do this for social media. You guys, I barely post. Like, I don't do this as a, you know, I, I could be on social media as a, a means for my business. But honestly, my work speaks for itself and me showing up to shows. I could get plenty of clients that way. But I know when I'm done when it's not fun anymore. And I don't right. want to go to the gym day in and day out. No one sees me in the gym and the amount that I do in the gym. Nobody sees me waking up at six o'clock for cardio. No one sees all those things. I do those things because I want to, and that's what right. I find joy in right now. But as soon as I don't find joy in it anymore, I'm done. And I that's know right. that. Um, so really, you know, looking internally of what fuels you, what fuels your fire in the sport, what's your why, and finding worth too outside of bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. Because bodybuilding is a part of us, but it's not our entire life. You right. know, we're we have our, our dogs and we have our work and we have our client, you know, whatever. And finding your, your, your roots and other things as well. That way, when you hear the noise and you hear that feedback, it's not so soul crushing for you. Yes. And there are a lot of athletes that bodybuilding is their entire world. I've been there too in the beginning. I had no room for anything else. And then when something else happened with bodybuilding and I felt, you know, a little, like annoyed with bodybuilding or I didn't want to do it or I felt like people were attacking me for it. I felt like I had nothing else to lean on. So it's really important to find that balance in other areas mm -hmm. of your life too. Yeah. To keep which, um, I went ahead and pulled up the next half of this topic, which is about uh, social media and everything too, because you're right. I mean, um, at the end of the day, bodybuilding is a selfish sport. It really Extremely is. It's all, selfish. It's all about yeah. you. It's all yeah. about you. So that only goes so far. You know, I think, I think some people realize how selfish it is. And then they just, like you said, no longer find joy in it and they have to find ways to find joy in it. Um, sometimes people find ways in, with social media, which is what we're going to talk about in a second. Um, but I think, like you said, you've got to find reasons why it's joyful for you. You know, what's doing for you personally. Um, you know, I know for me, if it weren't for my business, I probably would have stopped this a long time ago and I would have just worked out for myself. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't have, I wouldn't still be competing, but I enjoy the challenge. I enjoy, I enjoy the changes in the sport as we, as the criteria changes. It's interesting to me. Like I like putting puzzle pieces together and things like that, but I also like putting people on stage and seeing them achieve that too. And, you know, I sit back and say, well, if, if, if I'm asking them to do it, I should be able to do it too. You know what I mean? I should be able to put my, myself in their shoes. So that's part of the reason that it keeps me engaged in bodybuilding myself. A big part of the reason. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, I'm a healthy person. I, 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 I look good. I look great for my age. I'm just saying I don't need to do the stage part if I don't want to. But to me, it's a challenge and I enjoy it. Um, and going back to the would you ever do 
would you still bodybuild if there was no social media? Well, when I first started in this, there was no such thing as, as IG. You know, we had MySpace, um, had a little bit of Facebook going on, but people didn't share progress photos and things like that. That's not something we did. Um, it was actually weird for girls to be doing this sport. It was very, very niche. It still is, but it was very, very niche. It was mostly men. It was not women. And part of the reason why I liked it and why I was attracted to it is because nobody else was. Because <laughs> it was unique. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, it's different. It's something fun that I, that's mine and nobody else's. My, my group of friends, my girlfriends that I hung out with at the time, none of them understood it. They were just like, why are you doing this? Like, you know, at the time I was in my twenties, we were going out drinking all the time and all those kinds of things. You know what I mean? And like, why are you doing this? I'm like, because I don't want to, I, I don't want to be an alcoholic and fat. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't, I'm not getting fulfillment from going to the, the club every single night, you know, like it's cool. It's fun, but it's not fulfilling by any stretch of the imagination. You know, I don't need to do this anymore. Um, you know, and, and, you know, I'm not saying that I don't still go out and have fun, but I, I'm not to that extent, you know, and I wanted to find something. I, again, I wanted to find something that was for me. I was working a nine to five job at that point in time. You know what I mean? I was, I was doing the things that you're supposed to do in life. And I was like, I need something that's mine. And that's what bodybuilding became for me. It was not about posting online at all. Zero. Yeah. Like yeah. none of it. So that, I mean, when I started and even now I post now because of my clients, that's the reason why I do it. Because again, I'm showing you guys, listen, I walk my walk, you know, I, I, if, if I'm asking you to do it, I better be able to do it too, you know, yeah. and, I, and I show it every week. Yeah. I show you guys what I'm doing and that's why I do it. I don't need, I mean, I, my, my pictures barely change from week to week, but I do it so that I keep myself accountable and show you guys that I'm doing all the stuff that I'm asking you to do for me. And, and that's why I do it. I don't do it for the, for the likes. Cause I'll tell you what, if I was doing it for the likes and the praise and the comments, I would not be doing bodybuilding because that is not popular on IG right now. It's the whole Instagram thick ass stuff that's popular on Instagram right now. Let me tell you, when I when I post sexy shots, I get way more likes on those than I do on my progress photos. Progress so, photos. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not funny, it's um, not for the likes. <laughs> I uh, was walking the roof last night up on our building, and there's a woman uh, who lives here. Her name's Julie, and she looks fantastic. Uh -huh. I was like, this girl has to compete, like currently. Yeah. Um, so last night she was walking the roof too. So we started a conversation, and she did compete a couple mm -hmm. of times uh, back in 2014, and um, she was figure then. And she's she's like she would totally be bikini now, like beautiful, yeah. like. But yeah. she still lives the lifestyle. So I yeah. still get up at you know, 6, 15, 6.30. I'm doing my cardio. She's on cardio behind me on the stair mill. She lives the lifestyle. She's walking steps last night. She's not competing, but she still lives the lifestyle even yeah. from 2014. And this woman could step on stage in three months if she wanted to. She's kept her muscle. She's lean. She's beautiful. I mean, but that's the thing is like she competed 2014 not competing anymore because she figured out that figure was getting huge. And she's mm -hmm. like, I'm not, I'm not about that, but still kept the lifestyle yep. because she truly loves it and, yep. and likes to the journey, you know? Yep. And so for me and you, when we're done too, that's what we're going to continue. It's not like, we're just going to be like, all right, let's eat out every night and, you know, do yeah. this and that. We're still going to follow some sort of macros right. or intuitive eating and, you know, not be drinking on the weekends. And her and I talked about, you know, how drinking makes us inflamed. And mm -hmm. she was like, you want to go, um, you want a date night together and go drink water on the roof? I'm like, you're my girl. <laughs> and she's like, well, let's go drink water on the roof and we'll be in bed by nine. I'm like, you're my new best friend here. I know. <laughs> and, and from 2014 and we're in 2024, 10 years ago, she still has that mindset and that mentality, you know, and that's, that's, that's the lifelong approach, you know, if yes. you're learning the tools as you're going within bodybuilding. So it, it really is. It's about, you know, how much you love the lifestyle. And right now, a part of the lifestyle is stepping on stage. Mm -hmm. And five years from now, when you and I are done, we're still going to be living the lifestyle, not stepping on stage. That's right. But we're still living the lifestyle That's because right. we love it truly That's in right. our heart. It's our, it's our innate nature. Mm -hmm. And I think what happens a lot of times, too, is for the people that are not looking at it like that and they are doing it for the likes, those are the ones that have really bad, like, off seasons and rebounds. And they have really bad swings and really bad... Um, you know, just in general, just have a bad taste for bodybuilding in general, because they go, they go at it from the standpoint of trying to do it as a popularity contest versus doing it for themselves. Right. right. I think it's about I, the show. That's yes, it. Yes, that's right. It's about getting up there on show day. And that's it. I, I, you know, I've had some clients that have come to me, um, for training and diet now that have competed in the past. And it's like, 
they come to me now and it's like they never even learned a thing from when they were on stage before. And I'm like, did you track anything? Like nothing? I, I, I just, where did all that go? You know, yeah. because they, they didn't have the motivation of doing it for themselves. They had the motivation of doing it for the stage. Right. Yeah. I was just posing a client this morning before this and she's a mom and uh, just doing a bucket list for, for, for show. She's 10 weeks out and she's the leanest she's ever been. And she's like, mm -hmm. I love this body. I can't mm -hmm. imagine getting leaner. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. so this body is like what we sh you want to be all the time, right? A little bit dieted down, but we got to get the extreme. And she's like, I would be happy just stepping on stage this way. And then, you know, we were talking about, she goes, let's talk about post-show. She goes, that's really important to me because I know how important mm -hmm. post-show is so that I can get back to this body and maintain here. So this is a person that's a first time competitor. She hasn't even stepped on stage yet, but she's already looking ahead yeah. to say, this is now new my, my new lifestyle. And I want to yeah. look like this 24 seven in this healthy body, not going back to where I was, not going to where I'm going for stage. So how do we get there? And she's mm -hmm. already having her wheels turning on that of how she's going to approach post-show because it means enough to her that she wants yeah. to work. And that's amazing. That is something yeah. you can't teach a first-time athlete. That is someone mm -hmm. that just truly understands the lifestyle that's and right. wanting to become the best version of herself. She hasn't even stepped on stage yet. And she's already yeah. thinking about these things. Because she feels good and she looks good and she likes the way the results that are that are happening and she likes what she's doing daily to be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's 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 where it's important. And you bringing that up just made me uh, think of something. So, you know, we've talked about this before, wanting to have a, like a new division or something like that that's a little bit below bikini. I was talking about this with my husband the other day. I said it a few times to him, I would love to have a division that's a bikini, bikini pro off season. Like I would love to have a division where we're 10 pounds from, from our typical stage weight and that's your division. So still very athletic, very, very um, fit, all of those kinds of things, just not the extreme body fat levels. Um, I think that that would be gorgeous on stage. I'm like, just throwing that, throwing that out there. I think that that's would, my that favorite would, look. That's my same. favorite look. Like Same. one, one like on my stage weights usually like one eighteen to one twenty, like one thirty to one thirty five. Mm -hmm. I love that live in body. Same. Like when I'm done competing, that will be my goal to live in that kind of you know frame. And then you have to think too, when you're done competing, you're gonna lose some muscle. We're not gonna be yeah. as big as we are, right? So yeah, the, the, the weight's gonna come down a little bit. But I agree. Like I love that look, and it yeah. is. I think it'd be so good too for amateurs to see that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know what I mean that that Absolutely. healthy little bit of body fat glowing, not yep. depleted yep. down. You know, I think that would be beautiful. You yeah. Know, maybe a different suit cut, like a more of like a, like I want to say like a booty short versus like a thong or, you know, something yes. like that just to make it so achievable and yeah. reachable. Well, that's the thing too. It's not like it's easy to get there. You have to still build muscle. You still have to train hard. You're not skinny. You know, I think it's a, it's a, it's a good balance between where bikini used to be, where bikini used to be this model contest and now it's this really extreme, like lean conditioned muscular body right in the middle. We want somebody who's trained really hard, who's very um, healthy nutrition wise and things like that to full round athletic, all of those athletic. Kinds of things. Yeah. And it's a really, it's a really pretty look, but you don't need to see the full on etched in abs. You don't need to see the hamstring tie-ins. You can have a little jiggle in your butt, you know, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's what your husband likes. Things. Exactly. I'm not saying Dan, I'm saying husband. No, like, no my like, husband likes that. Yeah, mine does too. Mine does too. And it's, my, this, I think it was actually the same athlete I was just talking about because she was like, my husband says he sees my ribs. He actually likes me a little bit fuller. I'm like, yeah, they do. Like they That's like right. shape. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So this yeah. is my petition. We need an off season bikini look for a division. That's what we need. I'll, I'll be your first signature. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And then, you know, the great thing about that, and again, I'm going back to like how this could work into the business of it. Oh, just scratch my own microphone. Um, so I'm going back to the business of this. You get into that off season shape and you can compete like that. And then when you want to push your body to the extreme, you can compete in bikini. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So it's like you have that that wiggle room of, you know, your body, the way that it is at any point in time during the year can be competitive just depending on the division that you enter. So absolutely. I think we would get a lot of looks on stage if we were in our off season bodies on stage, you know, let's do it. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, right. Seriously. I mean, I <laughs> yeah, this is our new division. We came this, up with a great this idea. This is our new division that we are. Starting. Yes. I, I just. Uh, we, we can be the head, headliners of it, right? We will. It's, it's, yes. it's, the, it's the behind the bikini uh, division. So and we'll, <laughs> we'll judge be, it. Right, exactly. We'll be the judges. We're both head judge. I love it. <laughs>
if you agree, comment below. Start yes, comment. Bikini. Absolutely. Start sharing this. Like, tell people yes. we're going to have an off season bikini division. That's I love what we're it. Do. I love it. Because <laughs> the cool thing hey, about that, too. We already started what? the movement with uh, medium, medium banana. banana. <laughs> okay, so I think we could start a movement for know, another the medium division. Medium banana. I know. I was like, uh, I said that to you earlier this week. I'm like, of all of the things that we put out on, onto our podcast, we are going medium to be known banana. for the medium banana. <laughs> like, of all We're the things. Lives. We're changing lives. <laughs> One medium banana at a time. One, One medium, medium banana, banana at a time. time. <laughs> I freaking love it <laughs> of all the things. Um, but no, seriously, again, going back to, I'm, I'm getting all excited about this off-season bikini idea. So like, cause even girls in other divisions could do it too. You know, like the, like figure girls totally. would fit in that in off-season. You know what totally. I mean? Totally. Everybody would fit. Totally. It's such a good idea. <laughs> and it would just help, like I said, the amateurs so much because you know, pros just hide. They hide in their off season and it just doesn't give a realistic expectation of what is needed to grow and live in a healthy body, you right. know? And we are, we're so skewed as athletes of what a normal healthy body is. Yeah. I get it. But then that will bring some realism. Right. And, you know, just like on, you know, the pro level, we see all different heights and shapes and sizes. Same thing in the off season. You see all different shapes, sizes, and what's healthy and, you know, what different shapes are. And, you know, oh, she's looking, she's grown, whatever. It's going to, it will, it would bring that perspective. It's kind of like the angel fashion show, right? Like yeah. they do that like in the, in the intermission, that could be something you do in the intermission. You That's know? right. It really is a good idea. You know, and I, I mean, at the end of the day too, like I said, we, we have that whole body positivity mo movement going on now and things like that too. This would really lend to that in a healthy way, you know? Yeah. So again, we've always talked about this when you're in a, in a sport like this, it does get extreme at the pro level, but it doesn't have to be in the off season. You know, in the off season or improvement season, that's when you have the healthy look going on. So that's when it could be celebrated too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm just saying. I, I like it. <laughs> Told you. Yes. We got the idea. We got a new division. We got a new division coming in 2025. <laughs> All oh, right. Man. So let's um let's go ahead and go into we have a couple of questions here that I pulled up. So we'll go ahead and do those before we wrap up for today. So um, this one I thought was an interesting one that you might be able to uh, comment a little bit on. So I'm going to show this real quick. So the question was, when you hit a plateau in your training weights and you can't go up for weeks, would you increase calories? So what would you do with a client if they're not able to increase their weight on, on a particular training? Oh, I have a lot of questions about this one. So number one, what is the exercise? So mm -hmm. if it's a more of like an accessory movement, um, cable kickback. Mm -hmm. That's just not really a movement that you can get really heavy at any point. No. It's just going to kind of keep, you know, you kind of hit that point of your max weight. Yes. And then the way you can challenge it is by adding in like some tempo work or some holds yeah. or like some pause sets. So what, what it, type of movement is it? If it's a compound movement, like a hip thrust or a squat, whatever, I would then try to dig a little bit deeper in to mindset. So mm -hmm. are we really plateaued? You know, really, are you pushing yourself? Things like that. Um, nutrient timing. Are you yeah. eating enough before your workout to give yourself energy before the workout so that you feel like you can push? Very rarely mm -hmm. am I going to increase calories because of a plateau Correct. within the gym. It's usually something else. Yep. And quite honestly, maybe you've been doing this sort of hip thrust setup for whatever. And if you've been doing it six, eight weeks and, you know, intensity is good and energy is there and you just literally cannot increase the weight, maybe that movement's not good for you anymore right now and switch it out for a similar movement to try to give your body a different stimulus. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's the approach I would take. I would have some questions back to yes. this one. Um, but no, I would just increase calories because of a plateau because of training. Yeah, I agree. And then also just to piggyback on that, another point too, it could be how you're structuring your workout too. You know, it could be where you're doing those particular movements, you know. Yeah, so, move them earlier in the workout correct. versus later or middle. Right. Yep. Do a warm up Absolutely and then, then go into the, into the, you know, hip thrust or whatever it might be. Because you're right. There are certain movements, like you said, the cable kickback or like a, a, a lateral dumbbell, dumbbell raise or something like that. They're not going to go up and wait that much. You know, Correct. you don't want them to really. I mean, it's more, it's more the mind muscle connection, the time and retention, all those kinds of things that make the difference. Correct. So you're right. If it's one of these ones where you want to push the weight, the things that you mentioned, then I would also say like the actual exercise timing as well as nutrient timing, like you said. So, um, yes. no, I, I agree. I wouldn't, I wouldn't increase your calories just because you're not getting stronger. 
I, I, I don't I don't think that, that correlates. Now, if you're saying for the entire workout, you're feeling depleted and like you don't have energy, first thing I'm going to look at is nutrient timing and your food selection. And if that's okay, then maybe there's a warrant for increase of calories so long as your body weight is maintaining. Mm -hmm. You know, so I have people that check in with Mm -hmm. me, their weight dropped and they're like, man, I felt like crap in the gym this week. I didn't feel like I could push, but but that warrants then an increase in calories. But just for one exercise, there's something else that needs to be switched or changed or looked at. Yep. And it could be also going back to, it could be when you're training too. Some people train better in the morning. Some people train in the afternoon. Some people train at night, maybe adjusting when you're actually doing your training as well. I know for myself, my best training times is around, around one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I'm 11. Yeah. I need a couple of meals in me. I need to have gotten some of my work done. Cause again, going back to the mental is a big part. You know, I need to, I need to get my work done and you get those things that are pressing in the morning done. I can't just go straight to training because then I can't concentrate on it. You know, Correct. Me too. so it could be that too, you know, absolutely. Um, yeah. other thing too, is if I wait too long and I go to the gym, the gym is packed. Oh, I hate it. Hate it. I don't, I don't train in a gym like that. That's why I train at private gyms. That's why I have my oh, own gym. <laughs> can't do it. You know, I, when I go to the shop, it's never an issue. Like even at right. the busiest times, people leave you alone. There's always equipment available. I have no issues with that at all. But if I'm trying to rush and go to Planet Fitness, Planet I Fitness. try to go, if I try to go after one o'clock in the afternoon, screw it. No, it's just not happening. It's just not happening. Yeah, I can't get to stop. I'm like, at night and you can't even get a treadmill and people are waiting for Right? You. Yeah, no. Mm-mm. Yeah, no. Thank you. Mm, no, stay away from me. Blessed to you guys that do that. <laughs> I know, I can't do it. I mean, you know, and at the end of the day, sometimes you have to do what you have to do. I Absolutely. get that. You know what I mean? We both yeah. work from home for the majority of the time, so we can structure our training how we need to. But those are the things, again, going back to those are the things I would look at versus, you know, just increasing calories because you can't up, up a weight on one exercise. Correct. So, yes. cool. Awesome. So, here's the next one. Do you ever notice night sweats or hot or get hot during sleeping and prep? Yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, I uh, just invested a few years ago. My husband wanted this. It's called the eight sleep or the sleep eight. I don't remember if it's eight sleep, sleep eight. Um, it's amazing. It does all the data that an aura ring does, um, but it also heats and cools your bed. Oh, I'm okay. a very temperature sensitive person. So is Drew. So um, it cools your bed and it can also heat it for you. So ever since I've used this, not a problem. However, yes, in prep, I do get night sweats um, and sleeping. So a couple of things that affect this are fat burners, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then number two, um, your hormones. You, yes. know, you have to think when you are, when you're in prep, your hormones are all over the place. So just like for some of you that when you're starting to get your menstrual cycle, you might notice that you get like a little bit flush quicker, mm-hmm. a little bit hotter quicker because your body is trying to stimulate a period and the kind of that metabolism is kind of working on overdrive. So that's the, the same concept in prep with the hormones. When the hormones are kind of all over the place, night sweats are a thing. Uh, progesterone usually is really big on like hot flashes, night sweats, things like that. So for people that are on like TRT, HRT and have a progesterone at night, they usually don't really experience this as much. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Um, I like to, I I buy, before I have the sleep bait, um, I buy these little tiny fans on Amazon and I, it's a travel fan too. I literally take it with me everywhere and I have a fan blowing on my face all night and it just helps. Oh, wow. Um, and then obviously you could get like, you know, the cooling pillows and, you know, things yeah. like that. Honestly, ladies, a satin pillowcase does wonders yeah. for this too. It keeps like a little bit of cold and it's great for your hair, but it keeps yep. that cooler versus like a cotton. Um, but yes, very normal. It happens. Totally yep. normal. It Plus, when you, and when, yeah, when you have a husband also, that's freaking a, a heat burner sleeping and next two to dogs. you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if, the body heat. Yes. every morning it's, it's like a thing now, every morning Elvis jumps on the bed and jumps on top of me. And I'm just like, really? I'm like, <laughs> I don't Mom, understand. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. It's like, if you're not getting up, then I'm going to make you. <laughs> mm-hmm. My dog's new thing is that they wake me up and then we go feed them and I take them downstairs to go to the bathroom. And then um, all of a sudden they're gone. And I'm like, where the heck are they? Those guys go jump back into my side of the bed and put themselves into my comforter and you can't see them. They just literally oh, wow. bury themselves in my bed and they just sleep there for hours in the mornings. When they're ready to come out, they come out at like 1130 and they're like, <laughs> like royalty. Yeah. Like yeah. They needed their, they needed their, their siesta. <laughs> yeah. Then, then I go make the bed for them. <laughs> That's so funny. So yeah. on another story with that too, with, uh, 
So Dolly, she's got several beds and like homes in our in our home, right? So in our bedroom, she's got a little a little playpen. In our, our living room, she's got a little playpen. In Dan's office, which is next to our bedroom, she's got a mattress in there. So she sleeps in there most of the time. So he goes through and he organizes his, his office through the day and like cleans everything up, right? So he takes her little mattress and puts it into her playpen in the bedroom. That night... She's like crying because her blanket that she normally sleeps on is underneath the mattress and she wants her blanket on top of the mattress. <laughs> She's like, somebody needs to come fix my bed. I'm the princess. <laughs> and you knew exactly what she was crying about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She wanted her blanket. That's what she so sleeps you, so on. So you fix night. it and she goes oh, right yeah, she's the bed, fine now. Sure. Yep. She's fine now. Yep. But like, again, so now that the mattress that was in Dan's, in Dan's office is now in the bedroom. So she, like he put it initially by the window thinking maybe she wants to sleep by the window. She won't go sleep by the window. She goes back to where the mattress used to be. That's her spot. She's like, nope, this is my spot. I, I'm staying right here. You can put my mattress back. <laughs> she's routine. She's, she's routine. Like, she's a princess. She's a princess. Listen, it's their world. We're living in it. That's right. Exactly. I, I, mean, I wish I had says, the confidence in that. I work so my dog can have a better life. And every yeah. time I wear that shirt, I get so many compliments. But it's true. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they, they run our lives. They're the, they're the best, they though. They <laughs> we wouldn't have it any other way. I know. So we got one more that I'm going to pull up for our last question for today, which is, can you talk about what you eat day of show? So... Um, this is very person dependent, as we always say, this is person dependent, but what do you typically have day of the show? What is your, what's your thing? <clears throat> person dependent and show dependent, right? Like how lean are we? How much are we trying to fill out? You know, sometimes we wake up and we're full, full, full. So really, we don't really eat much and I'm eating just my pump up food, which is a couple of rice cakes, honey, nut butter, salt. Yep. Um, if I need to fill out, I try to stick with my same meals, um, which is usually oats or rice. And I love banana on peak week. The, the uh, potassium really helps me not get so crampy on stage day. And it's also, uh, we've talked about this for higher calorie, lower volume. So it helps keep mm -hmm. my waist nice and tight and get my calories in. Um, I do not eat protein on show day uh, because I like to keep my waist nice and tight. So protein obviously makes me feel a little bit fuller. Um, so most of the time I'm just eating carbs, fats, sodium, keeping water super consistent. Um, but again, show to show, this can depend based, based yes. on how I wake up and the look. Um, you know, what, what we usually try to do is on Friday night, put me to bed spilled so that yeah. I wake up really tight and full. And then we're just kind of making small adjustments here and there. However, especially the first few shows of the season, once you start feeding the body, it's very normal for the metabolism to start ramping up and you're just burning through food at that point. So mm -hmm. the first few shows of the season, it's really very common for me to wake up flat um, and then we have to kind of feed, you know, into the yep. show. Um, so again, so I just stick to carbs, nut butters, water, sodium, things like that. No protein for me. And then how much is dependent on what we look like. Yeah. And say kind of same thing with me. It's completely show dependent on what I look like when I wake up in the morning. But typically, you know, we, we're starting to pull the carbs higher on like Wednesday or Thursday of peak week. So, you know, that by the time we get to show day, same thing. You go to bed really full the night before. The next day you get up and you don't have to eat much, you know. Correct. Um, I'm trying to think. I think I, for, I mean, for Hawaii, that was completely different because of the period situations. So we were period. just trying to mitigate my, yeah, trying to mitigate my waistline and all that kind of stuff. And just, bleh. but, um, Japan, it was just, that's all it was. It was rice, rice cakes, and then pump, the pump up food, which was rice cakes and, and jelly and, and salt, you know, and again, just sipping on water, making sure we're getting that, that flown through. Um, <clears throat> that's the other thing too. Uh, we never cut water. <laughs> so some people, I don't understand why you want to cut water ever. Like, it doesn't make any sense at all. Like water, cutting is what water you're not ready for the show. Yeah. Water is what shuttles your food into your muscle without it. I mean, it just sits there. It just sits in your gut. So you should never be cutting water if you're, I mean, like you said, if you're if ready. You, yeah. If you're cutting water, it's, it's for other reasons, right? Your, um, your, your coach is having a Hail Mary. That's yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. Something else too, and maybe this is also what they're trying to go to is I think you do the same thing, Sean. We stick to our same foods. Yes. We're not adding in burger and fries. We're nope. not experiencing that we haven't had the entire time in prep. We're eating the nope. same exact foods, just more of it. Yep. Um, so like I have two girls that are getting ready to peak for girl power and they're both like, what food do you want me to bring? All your same foods bring a lot of it though, yep. because right. 
they utilize the same the same amount of foods because the digestion is good and we know it's working right now it's keep the body consistent that's the the name of the game in prep the more consistent and predictable your body can be so don't just throw in a burger and fries on a Friday night and you haven't had a burger and fries all prep. You have no clue how that's going that's to right. affect you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've had, and I've had coaches do that with me in the past. There was one time where I got a burger at the hotel and it messed me up so bad. My stomach hurt so bad. I was on the floor. Like I, I needed to be on like hard surface just to lay there and hope that it would go away. You know, and I was yeah. literally on the floor all night long. It was terrible. <laughs> It was terrible. And if you, there are some cases where like the, the client is just so lean and you have to push fat so yeah. high. Okay, well then get a cleaner source. Go get a filet yeah. and a potato. Yeah. You know, go get just a meat, a, a, a animal protein, mm -hmm. a carb source, you know, and kind of think about it that way. But um, yeah, it's, it's pretty much your, your same food, just more of it. Yep, pretty much. Um, you know, and, and again, going back to it's nothing. I have, Again, one of the things that the worst things I heard going into peak week is that's the week where you can fix all the things that you fucked up during prep. No, peak no, week, there's I, nothing magical that happens no, on peak week. It's nothing. you actually just cruising into the show. What you got is right. what you got. And that's right. whatever the amount of conditioning is that you got, that's what you have. And you're just really working on the fullness at that point. That's right. Yep. So it's athletes just... that say that they're not eating, like going into the show or not eating on show day, it's for a few reasons. Number one, they have plenty of muscle, and so they need to come in flat. They can't fill out because they just look mm -hmm. full by being flat, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Number two, they're not ready for the show. They still have body yeah. fat on them. So your coach can't feed you when you still have body fat on you right. because it just is what it is. So that's why they're yeah. trying to cut water to dry you out, but they can't fill you out. You're already full because you're not depleted yet. That's right. Um, so that's where people are like, well, I didn't get to eat on show day and why not? Blah, blah, blah. Well, you have to look at what the look was, you know, right. or if the coach didn't know what they were doing, obviously and there's that too. That, that, that could, could be that caveat too. But yeah. if you are truly stage conditioning, you should be eating into your show to fill yes. back out. Yes. And again, going back to the, the normal food choices. And again, I had a coach that, that used to carve me up on Snickers bars and pop tarts and gummy worms and, and all of them at the same time. It's not like we just picked one. It was just all of them at the same time. It was so bad. <laughs> not only, not only does it make your, your stomach blow out. That's one of the first thing that it does when you introduce all that stuff in there. But it also sets you up for a really poor reverse because you just in it has this whole influx of crap food, and now your body's like, "Oh, I haven't had this in forever, and I want more of it." You know, yeah. That's one of the reasons why when you're done with finals, you shouldn't go like binge on cookies and stuff because then all of a sudden your body's like, "Ah, I got sugar, I want more." You know. No, yeah, that's the, that's the hard part with like refeeds and prep. You know, I gave yeah. a girl a refeed about four weeks ago, and. Um, she was suffering after because it just brings your hunger up. It just ramps that metabolism back up. So it's like, you really have to decide as a coach, is the refeed going to be worth it for this athlete? And in this case, it, it wasn't, you know, I wish yeah. I didn't do it for her. She was struggling mentally. So I, was, I thought maybe give her a refeed that will help, you know, and it didn't and set her back for like a week because she was so hungry. So it's just really yes. navigating that and trying to figure out like, is it worth it just to push and keep depleting or is the refeed worth it? Yeah. Um, so you know, the other athlete that I'm taking, so that athlete is going to girl power. And then the other athlete, I'm refeeding her this week. Um, I added in 25 grams of carbs every day. So she's up to today, as of today, 125 grams extra carbs than she was on Saturday. And she just keeps dropping weight. So, mm. you know, at this point, the refeed is needed. She yeah. needed that refeed and she, and her, she's not hungry. She feels good. She feels satisfied. So it's just really being able to, you know, navigate that and really listening to the athlete, what, you know, what, what you think you need. And sometimes it's coach, you make the wrong call. I made the wrong yeah. call for that athlete four weeks ago. We learned about it. I'm noting it and I'm yeah. not going to do that going into nationals. Well, so you know, things that you, you learn. No, you didn't know that was the wrong call. You Sometimes yeah. you got to Sometimes you got to try it and see what happens. Absolutely. And like you said, then, then that's when you make that note and be like, okay, we just know we can't do that again. You know, Absolutely. that's all. That's yeah. all. Sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to just throw it out there and just see what happens. Yep. Yep. Trial and error. Yeah. So yeah. at the end of the day, you want somebody, like you said, that's like you was engaged with it and be like, okay, we realized this was not the right answer. So let's just make sure that we don't do that again. And that's why exactly. having that communication with your coach, continuing with a good coach is an important thing and not just throwing it all away after one failed peak or something like that, because you just learned stuff, you know, even if you screwed it up, at least you learned you know? Yeah. Yes. And then yes. you know not to do it the next time. So that's it. That's it.
you know, that's it. So, yeah, yeah. so I, again, going back to this this particular question, it's it's uh, person dependent, but I would say in general, you're willing to stick with the majority of the foods you already eat and not go not go crazy and um, listen to your coach. <laughs> Number as we one. always say, as we always say, go back to, divert back to, just listen to your coach. At the end of the that's day, it. even even if it fails, at the end of the day, at least you know and you know to, to do something different next time. And even at that, I mean, our bodies don't go in a straight line, so it could. Who knows? It could work next time. That's it. <laughs> you yes. know, you just never know. That's every, what keeps us, every peak is different. Yes. That's what keeps us addicted to the sport because we just don't know sometimes. And that's the, that's the fun part is trying to find those puzzle pieces that fit. And sometimes the puzzle pieces change from show to show too. So you got to be willing to accept that. That's not going to be perfect every single time. It's not going to get better every single time either. Sometimes it is going to get worse. That's just part of it. There's a, too many, there's too many variables. So part of the process. Yep. So with that, that'll be our last question for today. So um, like we talked about this coming week, you're home this week. I will be at um, Charlotte. So if y'all see me, say hi. Um, if you go out to the, the Arizona show, you'll have to let me know how that's going. Because they're on, they're on Saturday, right? I, yes, they are on Saturday. Okay. And you're on Is Sunday. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So that's, again, I go back to, yeah, I know, right? I'm like, that's, I go back to, I'm, I'm happy about that because I can keep track of everything that's going on this weekend. I kind of wish more shows would be on Sundays like that. Like, I don't know why they don't do Sundays. Like, that doesn't make like, – a lot of times, you know, you look at some of these bigger shows like the like the Chicago or Tampa or something, and they start on Thursday. Why don't you just start on Friday and go through Sunday? I think people want to be home for work on Monday. Yeah, but you got to be you got to be at work on Thursday anyway. Thursday, so, yeah, yeah. You know, what's the difference? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll put that in an email too. But as we were sitting here, I got my notification from Jamie that my, you know, for my check-in. So I got to see what, what I got to do this week. Um, see if I get, if I get uh, yelled at for not hitting my step goal. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I got close. I got close. But like I said, I was told her, I was honest with her in the check-ins. I was like, listen, after I got done with my workouts, I would go home and I wanted to take a nap. So that really actually impacted my step count for the rest of the day. So Absolutely. I got close, but I didn't, I didn't hit, I didn't hit it. Um, I was off by a bit. So you but can't I still nap got... standing up, Sean. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You I was can't like, nap standing up. I'm like, it just is what it is. I mean, we upped our upped my cardio, so with that, I got more tired too. You know what I mean? So that's all part of it. So we'll see. We'll see. We have to do this one week, week at a time. <laughs> I know, but I can see her see her in person, in Charlotte. So that's good too. So uh, yeah, that's right. Person. She leaves tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. With that, we'll wrap up our episode 32 and we'll be back again next week with more fun stuff. Make sure that if you have questions, you ask them in the comment box below, like comment, share, subscribe, turn on notifications, all of the fun things that you should already be doing. If you're not, you should be doing it now. <laughs> and uh, I will see you back here again next week. Enjoy your weekend guys. Bye.